Welcome back. In this tutorial, we'll explore the process of designing a form. Let's dive right in. Step 1. Form Design Layout As a designer, the default layout of the design includes various sections. For our use case, which is the employee onboarding process, I've already created a form. Our form consists of different sections, such as information, job information, equipment preference, account information, and documents. These sections contain the necessary data fields for the onboarding process. Step 2. Exploring each section. Let's go through each section in detail. The form begins with a title, Employee Onboarding Process, and it utilizes a list layout outcome. Moving to the Information section, we have components like first name, email, number details, other card, and start date. The first name section is divided into three columns using a three column component. Within the first name section, we have a text field component for the first name itself, with validation set to true. Similarly, the middle name component is also a text component with no validation. Moving on to the last name component, the label is name, and there is validation attached. Let's address the email component now. The email component has a placeholder value of sample at example.com, and validation is set to true. This component plays a crucial role in our form. Next is the contact number section, which uses a phone number component with validation set to true. Moving to the address component, the label is address, and validation is set to true. Similarly, the permanent address section is created. When the validation for the permanent address field is true, the value from the present address field is automatically mapped to the permanent address field. A condition is set to trigger this mapping only when both addresses are the same. This ensures consistency between the two fields. The same approach is followed for other components, such as the PAN component, which is a text component with validation set to true. The ADHAR number is also a text component with some validation. Moving to the start date section, it utilizes a day and time component to capture the desired start date. Now let's move on to the job information section. Here the field in this section is a drop-down component. When it comes to the department section, it uses a checkbox component, and the default values include accounting, marketing, production, customer care, and support. Next is the working type section, which is a radio button component with the options full-time and part-time. Moving on to the laptop section, it is also a radio button component with the option windows. In a similar manner, other sections like headphones follow the same approach. Now let's focus on the bank account information section. It includes an account number field which is a number component with validation set to true. Next is the I support section, which is a text component with validation set to true. The name section is also a text component. Lastly, in the document section, we have fields such as education certificate, experience certificate, ID proof, address proof, and form 16. All of them are marked as mandatory fields. Based on the provided information in this section, the year of experience becomes relevant. There's a condition that needs to be true. The user needs to submit the year of experience only when the applicant returns no. The qualification component is a setup component with default options provided, including Excel plus two, diplomas and masters. Now let's discuss file one in the file submission section. Here you can see file one with its storage set to 64. The label for this field is, please upload your educational certificate. The visibility of the Submit button depends on the applicant status. If the status is No Return Approved, the Submit button may not be initially visible. However, it becomes visible in the case of an initial application. Moving on to the HR section. This section is visible only when the application status is Resubmit. In the Comment section, you can see that the Data section asks for a value before. It contains data commandments like Data and Data1. These commandments provided by the HR are mapped in this section. Here certain fields are visible to the HR based on specific conditions. Next is the Setup Review Action section. It includes data power options such as UpCode or Inaudible and the APS action type. Now let's move to the Summit Action section. Here you can see the Submit Missionary and Submission. This field is used to pass data already submitted by the applicant. The HR's action is applied to the corresponding submission data. Now let's move on to the current component fields. The first one is the group check current component. 
It is used to check the groups of existing users. The value of the group's data is obtained from the local storage, and if the group does not include submit, the value of this field is set to resubmit. Next is the send back by field, which is used to capture the application ID and status in the backend. This helps track the application's progress. Then there's the detail section, which may not be editable by the reviewer. Certain disabling conditions are added. For example, if the application status is already new or resubmitted, or if the group check value is resubmit, this field should be disabled. Similar logic applies to other panels. That covers the form design part. Once the form design is completed, you can save the form. There's an option to make the form public, which means it is available to anonymous users. If you need a new version of the form, you can create one. The form history option allows you to track changes made to the form, and you can revert to a previous version if needed. The duplicate form feature allows you to create an exact copy of an existing form. Now let's proceed to the next section, where you can associate the form with a workflow. After associating the workflow, you can move to the exception section. Once the form is made public, anonymous users can access it. You can choose to publish the form for client users as well. The form is now complete, and I'm saving the changes. Here you can see the form is available to anonymous users. That concludes this section, and I hope you now understand how to save the form. Thank you.